Evangelist Freddy Ruano of El Salvador. My Glorious Resurrection from Hell. On February of 1981, an illness attacked my body. At the beginning of this illness, I didn't give much attention to it because I was just running a mild fever. I thought to myself, okay, it's just a cold. I began to take painkillers at home for three more days. On the fifth day, my temperature had become worse, so I visited the doctor. The doctor examined me and prescribed some medication and I went back home. I started to take the medications, but they didn't seem to work. By the eighth day, the fever had become even worse and, on top of that, I was also feeling a strange coldness in my whole body. My bones felt like they were being crushed and I felt like my head was going to explode. My family then decided to take me to another doctor. This doctor examined me and said, you are not sick. My family complained and told him, how can you say he's not sick when we've been taking care of him for the past eight days and he's been going through horrible fever and pain because of his illness. The doctor examined me again and replied, your temperature is normal, your pulse is normal, I cannot find any alteration in your body. However, I will give you medication because you say that you are sick. I will be honest with you, though, you are just wasting your money because you are healthy. He gave me medicine and I went home. When I got back home, my family was criticizing the doctor's diagnosis and saying that he wasn't qualified to practice medicine. I tried to stand up from where I was sitting, but my body was shaken by a nervous cold and I fainted on the floor. My family picked me up and took me to my bed. Then, this coldness that I felt, became stronger and possessed my entire being. As the hours slowly passed, I felt that my head was going to explode, and that cold was shaking every part of my being as I rested. Praise God that my family members are Christians. They invited brothers in Christ from the church to pray with me, but I wasn't healed. On day 15, all my internal organs became inflamed, and I could neither eat, sleep, nor drink water. Every eating experience was accompanied by pain. Even to sleep was equally a painful experience. When my family saw my deteriorating condition, they took me to the Salvadoran clinic which is a private medical center. The doctors were immediately concerned and they put me on oxygen, saline solutions, and a heart monitor as they began to run tests. Two days of tests continued as I was in the clinic. But I also want to tell all of you friends who read this that something strange happened in that place. My body was totally healthy. The pains that I had disappeared, the headaches, the cold, the pains in my body were gone. My family decided to take me home because keeping me in the clinic was very expensive. Time passed and I do not know how long but suddenly my body was overtaken again by that nervous cold and fever. On day 25, I had already been 10 days without eating, sleeping, and drinking water, and my body was dehydrated. I just looked like a living skeleton. My family realized I was dying, so they took me to the General Hospital of El Salvador. As I arrived, one of the doctors told me, do not worry, soon you will leave healed. Little did that doctor understand that this illness was not natural, but supernatural. This sickness was the will of God. The doctors kept giving me different diagnoses, but they were never right. If I were still there today, they would be debating about what was wrong with me. The doctors tested me at this hospital for three days and couldn't find a thing wrong with me. They used every kind of test that was available. It was so strange because each time I visited a doctor, the symptoms would leave and then whatever was tormenting me would come back to possess me when I returned home. I arrived home and my family was even more concerned. They said, may God keep you healthy this time. May God keep that illness away from you and have mercy on you so that this will be your last visit to the doctor. However, the illness returned and on day 33, I died. I had a life-changing meeting with our Lord Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. On that day I was even worse. I had a fever that morning, but I fell asleep in the middle of the day. I had some rest for about an hour, and then that illness came back to my body. 
About 7 p.m., my mother had been praying for me. After prayer she said, My son, thank God the fever has left your body. Listen, since you do not want to eat or drink, at least try to sleep a little and rest. She was going to the living room and told me, I will leave you alone for a moment, there is someone who is asking for me. I was looking at the door and suddenly saw a woman come through the door. She looked like a normal woman with long hair to her waist and she had grey clothes on. I turned my face to the wall because I thought it was a sister from the church that my mother used to attend. Suddenly, I heard a voice that told me, I have come here to take you. I turned my face to see who the person really was, and it was not the same person that I had seen before. His appearance was, in few words, just horrible. It is hard to describe with words how awful it was, I just saw that his eyes were red, but what made me feel more scared was that I saw him take out from his clothes a dagger of about two feet long and rushed me and then we began to fight. You can imagine how loud I yelled out as my family was in the living room talking. When they heard me yelling they ran at once and pushed the door and they were amazed, because they saw my body raised, jumping, falling, and spinning around that bed, as if I was fighting with an imaginary person. When my family saw me, they kept asking me what was wrong with me, what was going on. I begged them to help me, to take death far from me because I thought it was death who had come to take me. My distressed family shouted to me and told me that they could not come inside or even move because of a supernatural force inside their bodies that would not let them move from where they were standing. I continued fighting with that being, and my body began to weaken. I felt that he began to conquer me. When I was defeated, I felt how that dagger passed through my heart and I died. I do not know how long time had passed. My friend, I want to tell you about three things that the devil is putting in the minds of the people. He is putting a lot of disbelief and a lot of conformity to the world in the hearts of men. People wonder whether the devil is like what the world shows us he is or if he is like what the Bible shows us. The devil wants people to believe that the soul does not exist. The devil says that the grave is the end of your existence, nothing more. He also wants people to believe that there is a purgatory where people will go to pay for their sins and then God will take them from there to put them in heaven with him. I want to tell you my friend, that these are some of the worst lies from the devil because in the first place, the soul does exist. Secondly, the grave is not the end of life, after this life, there is another life that is eternal. Thirdly, purgatory does not exist. That is a lie from the devil and an invention of men, because if a person does not repent, or move away from his sins and get close to Jesus Christ and settle the sin debt with God, he will have to go to hell like I did. When that dagger went through my heart and I died, I do not know how much time passed afterward, but my soul, my true personality started to leave my body. The real personality is not the one that you can see and touch, but the real person's personality is the soul. The soul is the one that feels, sees, reasons, hears, and also is the one that will have to stand once and for all before the Lord to give an account of one's deeds on the last day. I began to leave my body and to float in the room. I could see my brothers crying and shouting that I was dead. I could see my mother on her knees crying before the presence of the Lord and I could also see my own body pale and rigid on that bed. Inside that room, I contemplated the world for one last time, and then I began to feel that something was pulling me like a magnet with darkness that began to cover me. I wanted to run away, but I couldn't, this being was pulling me at the speed of light. I couldn't escape even though I wanted to. Toward us, I could see some kind of mountain, and when we got closer I could see an opening like a crater. At the bottom of that crater, I saw a reddish mass, that wanted to reach us. It was there that I saw the lies of the devil, and I also see that we had a soul and that the grave is not the end of everything, because my body was not yet buried in the grave when I was already entering that place. I could see also that there was no purgatory because I asked this being that took me there, what kind of place is that? He answered me, this place is hell, your home, and it is where you are going now. I began to cry out to God. I wanted to run away 
but I could not because that door did not let me go. I started to say to death that I was a son of God, that Jesus Christ was my father and that I was his son, and that he said in his word that everyone who believes in Jesus everyone who cries out to him could not come to hell because Jesus had prepared a special place for his sons. However, you who read this, I want to tell you something, especially for those who want to have the privilege of a position inside the church, for all of those who want to work in the work of God, or those who want to reach eternal salvation, be very careful of how your life is lived before the presence of the Lord. Before I had this experience, I spent seven long years of my life telling people that I was a Christian, but my deeds were the same as any lost worldly person. Why was I saying that I was a son of God? I will tell you what my life was like before. I was born with a religious background. My family was religious, however, when I was nine years old I started to get lost in sins like smoking, having sex with women, and getting drunk. When I was twelve, I became independent of my father and started to practice witchcraft, the occult, spiritism and the last thing that I practiced was the Rosicrucian faith. Because of an illness that I had when I was twelve and since I was five years old I was blind and I lost hearing in my right ear, I accepted the gospel. I want to warn you that there are many who come to church just to receive their healing. There are others who come to church for fame or money. Others come to church just to get a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but I want to tell you, friend, that you should never go to church for selfish or carnal reasons. You should only go to church to glorify the precious and holy name of the Lord. Nevertheless, I only wanted to get physical healing for my life from church, and once I received it, I began to be active in the church. However, when I was active, the devil began to throw his darts, and I started to boast and be proud, hypocritical, rebellious, lying, and I even began to see my pastor as spiritually inferior to me, even though he is a great servant of God. In my eyes, though, he was lower to me because that is a common problem of human beings, we put our eyes on men rather than God. There are many who will be lost because they want to feel more important than the pastor or the deacon, maybe because they have a title, or because they have possessions. I warn you friend, be very careful of how you are living. One day my pastor, guided by the Holy Ghost, told me, Brother, repent and bear fruit worthy of repentance, or else one day you will know what the hand of God is. I answered him, How can you judge me if you are worse than I am? That is a major problem of human beings, millions of souls are lost because they put their eyes on the actions of men and say, oh, if Christians are like her, I better stay how I am now. Others say, I won't go to church until they change the pastor or remove the deacon. I tell you today, my friend, set your eyes on Jesus Christ who, alone, will grant you salvation. That is why when, I was at the door to hell, because of all my wickedness and sinful deeds that I had done, I told death that I was a son of God, but death answered me, if you were a son of God, God would never have allowed me to bring you to this place. We began to go down and when we came to the place, I could see that it was covered with darkness and smoke. When death stopped, the darkness was drawn back like curtains. I then began to go inside and feel that fire and steam, and a mass that was melting something like boiling honey. I began to feel and hear the screams of millions and millions and millions of souls in that portion of hell. Death began to get ready to throw me into hell and when he was about to do it, right behind us a strong and powerful voice sounded, a glorious voice of the Lord that said, Stop there. When that voice sounded, the place where we were shook tremendously and death ran away from the presence of that wonderful being. I wanted to see who was the voice that sounded with so much authority that even death ran away from his presence. I wanted to see the face of the person that with his very voice made hell shake. When I turned to see him, I just saw a very strong light, and I could not see anything more. I just heard that he got closer and told me, why are you saying that I am your father? Why are you saying that you are my son? It is true that I died on the cross in Calvary for your sins. It is true that I raised from the dead and brought the dead with me, but if you were my son, you would listen to my words, 
keep my commandments, and you would live a holy life. My sons are not adulterers, immoral people, idolaters, blasphemers, or drunkards. They do not practice witchcraft, boast, gossip, quarrel, create division, nor are they prostitutes, homosexuals, or thieves. All of them, absolutely all who practice these things belong to their father the devil. I felt like that voice was about to destroy me, and going to strike me dead. I thought this voice was going to send me to the bottom of hell. Fortunately after this, my friends, that hard, sharp, and powerful voice began to change into a melody, and then I could feel such love and tenderness, it felt like his voice came to me like a fresh breeze that caressed my body with a beautiful fragrance. Hallelujah! I began to hear him saying, Look, since you have had mercy on others, you have been given mercy and one more chance for your soul. Praise the holy name of Jesus. I want to tell you my friend, the Lord told me, Freddy Ruano, I didn't like how you prayed, fasted, or watched, nor how you gave your offerings and your tithes, or how you preached. Because the Bible tells us that, whatever a man sows, that shall he also harvest. I had been sowing wickedness, so the harvest was eternal punishment. The Lord was very clear to me when he told me that I had one chance given to me only because I had mercy for others. Those others, he was referring to were all of you, my friends, who listen or read what I am telling you. For the sake of humanity, God allowed this miracle to happen so you can be warned that there is a place of torment and so you can repent, depart from sin, and escape eternal condemnation. If you do this, you will have the chance to enjoy Jesus for eternity. Just because of God's mercy all of you can listen or read this testimony. The mercy that we have been given today is for the purpose of magnifying and glorifying the holy name of God. Then the Lord told me, look at the place where I have rescued you from. He made me go down to the bottom of that place. Then I began to feel death cover my body with flames, and I was suffocating. I wanted to escape, but the flames scorched me as it shot me up, and the flames caught me again. Suddenly, I began to look around me at the millions and millions of souls who were in the same torment as me. I could see the Lord Jesus high above me and souls cried out to him and said, My father! My father, let us out from this place for at least a moment. Those souls who were there would be content to be released from torment for just one moment. I want to warn you that you must make the most of the time you are given and use it wisely on the earth, because when these physical bodies die then there will be no more chances. The idea of being able to pray a dead person out of hell is a lie from the devil, not even with fasting and prayer or tithes, offerings, selling your possessions, lighting candles, ringing bells, nothing. We cannot help them any longer after they die. I will explain it to you this way. When all the souls were crying out, then the Lord took me out and turned his back to the rest of the souls as if they were not there. Then, he began to show me how the world was in its wicked delights. He told me, go, preach my word to others, tell them to repent and to depart from sin. Tell them that the place where they are walking to is hell. Tell them that hell is not like the devil describes it to people, he wants them to believe that there are women, dancing, and music. Tell them that if they think that the fire of earth burns, tell them that this place is increased by thousands of degrees in heat and the eternal condemnation is not temporary, not for one day, one month, or one year, tell them that the condemnation is clear because it is eternal and forever. I want to warn you. That's why you have to make the most of your time, because as long as you live, there is still hope, praise the Lord. Earth is the place where you put the stamp in your passport to the place where you want to go, either hell or heaven, you choose. In hell's fire, there's not only physical torment, but there are two other factors that torment people, their own conscience and guilt. The conscience torments because it remembers how many times they passed near a Christian church, how many times they were given a tract, how many times they were preached to, how many times they heard someone telling them about Jesus and they made fun of it, and then they began to regret because their conscience accuses them. Then they blaspheme against God, against their parents, 
and they begin to curse anyone they see, and if they can see any friend, they accuse each other and say, it is your fault that I am here. You never told me about this place. You just taught me to smoke and to do evil. It is because of you that I am here. God, however, wants you to escape this eternal condemnation. After this, I saw a street, with hundreds of people with Bibles under their arms. As they gathered together, they were pulling each other out and they got inside again. The Lord told me, go and tell these wicked ones, that they have to repent from their hearts, and not just with their lips as they are doing now. The Lord began to say, tell them that they are not my sons because they carry Bibles, because the sons of the devil walk also with Bibles and practice their rituals. Tell them that not because they pray, fast or watch, they have guaranteed their salvation. If their hearts have hate, resentment, hypocrisy, anger, fighting, pride and arrogance, lies, rebellion, I won't accept their sacrifice the Bible tells us in Matthew 5,23-24, when you bring your offering to the altar you remember that you if have something against your brother, leave your offering there, and go and reconcile with your brother first, then come back, and Jesus will accept it with joy. Hallelujah! Next, he said, tell them that not just because they have a position in the church, not because they sing nice, not because they preach nice, or give offerings or tithes, or the paralytics are healed, or that the mute talks, that means that they are saved because tell them that if in their hearts is pride, hypocrisy, rebellion, and lies, they will be just as bridges for other people to be saved, but they with all their pride will go directly to hell. Tell them, that I want their hearts and their minds in the churches, not just their bodies like they are doing today. Because today, their bodies are in churches, but their minds are in the matters of this world, in the desires of this world, or in the works of their homes. Tell them that I want them to praise me with their heart but also with their understanding, tell them that I want them to praise me in the spirit but also in truth. Glory to God! My brother and friend, God wants us to praise Him with all our heart, with all our strength, with all of our minds. Many today just praise Him with their lips but their hearts are far from Him. But God wants us to praise Him with all our beings, soul, spirit, and body, praise the Lord. He told me, Come. We began to go up and went away from that terrible place. As we were going up, I began to see a beautiful place. I saw beautiful white clouds, like cotton, that were moving from one place to another. I also heard some angelic praises, that were praising and glorifying the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah! After that, I heard him say, Look! I then saw how the clouds moved away like curtains, and far in the distance, I began to see something that appeared like the roof of a castle. There were doors, windows, and roofs that reflected many colors as if there were many precious stones encrusted in them. I saw a white street that shined and on its sides were gardens with very big beautiful flowers of multiple colors. Their smell was like the combination of thousands of delicious perfumes sprayed at once. Jesus told me, this is what I have prepared for my children. Hallelujah! Tell them that I am not a man that lies or son of man that I should repent. What I promised to them is faithful and true. All these things are waiting for those who want to receive it. But tell them to fight, tell them to make an effort, tell them to conquer, because all this is ready for those who want to receive it. After this, he said, observe and contemplate. I could see such a long table, with a white embroidered tablecloth with decorations everywhere. Parts of the table were made of pure gold and precious stones encrusted in it. The chairs were beautifully shaped with the names of the redeemed on them and I saw dishes full of food. Then I heard him saying, This is what I have prepared for my children. Tell them again, that I am not a man that should lie or a son of man that should repent. All this is waiting for all who want to receive it. If you don't have a place to live on the earth, don't be sad. Instead, repent and change your ways, because in heaven there are mansions that no hands of men have built, but the very own hands of the Lord have built those mansions. Praise the Lord! Jesus then said, Look, 
all these are for those who want to receive it, but tell them to fight, tell them to make an effort, tell them to conquer, because not all of them will be able to enter this place. I saw that something like a sheet of linen was untied, and he told me, give this message to those who begin the race and turn back. Tell them cowards will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Go. Give this message to people who fall back and give up just as they are about to finish, almost at the end of their race. Encourage them to fight, make an effort to be persistent, conquer, because their reward that is waiting is great. Greater than anyone can possibly imagine. Praise the Lord. It is true what the Apostle said in 1 Corinthians 2 colon 9, I has not seen, nor ear has heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what God has prepared for his children. After that, Jesus' voice changed to a voice of sorrow, like crying and said, Look at all the ones who were here and will not be able to enter. I want to warn you that it is not enough to be a holy roller or to be religious. It is not enough to say that you are a Christian, or that you carry a Bible under your arm, or go every Sunday to church. It is not enough to sing, pray, or fast. The most important thing is to run away from sin, live a life of fearing God, and live a holy life, a life that is pleasing to the eyes of the Lord. I can sadly remember right now, that when I was in hell, I saw a lot of my relatives. Do you understand how terrible this is? I had been praying for them. I had been lighting candles for them. I recited prayers for them thinking that I was going to take them out of hell and that they were now at peace with the Lord. To my utter shock, they are just burning in hell. I saw all kinds of people there, religious people, poor people, rich people, intelligent and well-learned people, and also ignorant people. I also saw pastors, evangelists, and a great number of Christians who were there. These were people I knew on earth, but because their lives were full of hypocrisy, rebellion, lukewarm living, pride, and arrogance, vanity, full of lies, and now they are burning in hell. Fortunately, you still have a chance as long as you are alive and are reading this. You still have hope. Be smart and escape eternal condemnation. Jesus continued, saying, Tell them I am tired of their passiveness. It is not time to criticize their pastor or the deacon. It is not the time for arguing or division. There is no time for vacations or time to watch TV. There is no time to go to church just two or three times a week. There is no time to be consumed with modern fashions. Enough. This is all garbage from the devil. Tell them that it is time to pray and fast. It is time to watch. Yes, tell them to pray, fast, watch to give me their hearts so I can direct and lead them. Tell them to make themselves ready because soon I am coming for my church, and my church is not ready. Tell them that I am weary of the social gospel, the commercial gospel, and this modern gospel. I am warning you, the devil is introducing a lot of modernism inside of the church. In these times, it is not wrong if the women cut their hair, or if men have long hair. Neither is it wrong, in today's standards, for women to use pants or neither is it wrong to get remarried after divorcing. However, all these worldly things and sins are from the devil, but holiness and sanctification are from God. Jesus then warned, enough of all this Christian passiveness. I have called them not to just warm the pews or chairs in a church, I have called them to preach the power of the gospel to lost souls. The devil is creating a lot of division inside churches. Churches cannot reconcile in heaven. The earth is the only place for reconciliation with your brothers and sisters in Christ. This way, when you enter heaven, you are already in harmony. In heaven, we will be together praising and glorifying the holy name of the Lord Jesus, Hallelujah. Jesus then said, I am tired of all the lies. People in the church lie as if they were a part of a lying contest to enter the kingdom of heaven. The devil is introducing a lot of deception to the hearts of men. People say today, ah, it's okay. It was just a little white lie, but no matter what kind of lie it is, that lie comes from the devil. The Bible tells very clearly that no liars will enter the kingdom of heaven. 
Then, Jesus said, I am so tired of their passiveness. I want them to truly forgive from their hearts, not just their lips, like many of them do. There are many who live a life of sin when the pastor, deacon, or family is not around. They come to church and think everything will be okay after a few minutes of praying and voila. They will be forgiven. Friends, soap cannot remove the eternal stain of sin. Neither can you flippantly pray with the intention of continuing a life of sin. God expects heartfelt repentance and confession. This will lead to salvation and holy life. Today, however, there are a lot of worldly and lukewarm Christians, even people with a position in church serving the Lord. Please repent. The hand of God's judgment comes upon the sons of disobedience. It is not important if you lose your position in the church. The important thing is that you make your heart clean before the eyes of the Lord, so when the trumpet sounds, we shall fly with Christ in the air. Jesus said, Tell them, that I want them to preach my word as it is written, without any changes, omissions, or replacements. The Lord told me that many times he gives a message to someone for the church, and if a certain brother or sister enters the church, the messenger thinks, Oh, if I preach that now, she won't invite me to lunch with her. Maybe she won't follow my preaching anymore, or she or he will not come back again. The Lord says, Whoever wants to go, let them. God wants those souls to be saved and not to go to hell. If God gives you a message, do not be afraid to give it, because if it is the word of God, it must come to pass. Who cares if they do not invite you to eat anymore or if they do not come back? Do not worry. You just preach the word, and give them the message. Otherwise, you will have to stand before the Lord to give an account of why you tolerated those sins. Jesus continued, Tell them that many of them preach that Jesus saves, but still have doubts about salvation. Many of them preach that Jesus heals, but the first moment they have a headache they immediately take aspirin from their bag. Tell them that I have the power to save and heal. Then Jesus confirmed his message to me with the following scriptures, 2 Chronicles 7 14, Colossians 3 5, James 4, Ephesians 5, Ezekiel 7, Ezekiel 13, Ezekiel 18, Ezekiel 33, Ezekiel 34, Jeremiah 7, Jeremiah 23, Amos 5:18, Amos 9:2, Zechariah 1:3-4, Micah 2, Micah 6:6, Isaiah 24, Matthew 7:21, Matthew 22:33-34, John 8:39, John 13:31, and 1 Peter 4:17-18. He then said, Go. Give my people the message and live it, because that is how you will reach salvation, with a life of holiness. I began to descend but, this time, I was not with the messenger of the devil. I was escorted by some angels that came down praising and glorifying the holy name of God. We came to the room, and when we got there, I saw a great crowd that was there. Some of them were laughing, some of them were eating, others hugging, and others crying. I saw my mother on her knees over my body, and I heard her voice saying, Father, if truly I am your daughter, my Lord, if you have received me as your daughter, perform a miracle, so that everyone here, who doesn't believe your word, will believe that you can perform miracles. I felt like something pulled me back to my body, and then I sat up on the bed. The first thing that I did was shout, glory to God. Then I said to my mother, Mom, I am hungry. I was raised from the dead and healed for the honor and glory of God, praise the Lord, and I looked for something to eat. When I said, glory to God, all the people turned to look at me. The sad part was, when I said, I am hungry, all the people began to run and trip over each other as they ran away. People who were outside and our neighbors came to see what had happened and they said, This is a true miracle. I am warning you all, Jesus is coming when we least expect him. The people at my home were not ready for such a moment like that. I died at 7.30 p.m. and I came back to my body at 11 a.m. the next day and they were about to put me in a casket. I do not know if my mom had spent all night next to my body. 
My family said that my mom was acting crazy. They had to go to the drugstore and buy an injection to apply to her and calm her down, so they could put my body in a casket and take it to the cemetery. My mother was not crazy, she just knew the God she had trusted, and that same God is the one who we are praising and glorifying right now. In the beginning, I did not know what to do, but one night the Lord appeared to me and said, Look, you wicked servant, I gave you one more chance to take this message to the people, so you will do it, or else I will cut you off forever. Since that day, I haven't stopped preaching to the world that they have to repent and turn away from their sins, that there are an eternal condemnation and punishment. I also preach that the Lord has promised a celestial country for all those who repent and receive him, for whoever departs from sin and evil. Jesus Christ has promised us forgiveness and eternal life, glory to God. If you have had the desire to get close to God, ask for forgiveness, and if you want to cry, just cry. Don't stop those tears before the presence of the Lord. Just pray, Our Father who is in heaven, I beg to you to have mercy on my soul. Forgive my rebellions and erase my offenses. I receive you as Savior and Lord. Please write my name in the book of life, Holy Father, let me be an heir of your kingdom. When you come back for your church, please make me worthy of going with you. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, heal me of all sicknesses of the mind and body. By Jesus' stripes, I was healed. Thank you Father for the victory in my life. Amen.